Crossroads to Crime, Gerry Anderson's very first feature film, was also his very first live-action production. Despite being the least memorable of his four films by a significant margin, Crossroads to Crime still manages to pack at least 55 seconds of action into its 54-minute runtime. This was how it began. A frightened woman forced into a car in broad daylight. Released in November 1960, the film follows the dangerous adventure of square-jawed local copper PC Don Ross, who suspects that a gang of lorry hijackers are operating out of a transport cafe after seeing its owner bundled into a car. Down at the station, Sergeant Pearson dismisses his concerns, but Ross, as you can probably tell just by looking at him, is a loose cannon who doesn't play by the rules, and he starts his own investigation. What is going on here? This has helped enormously when one of the gang, Diamond, as hard as his name, and twice as dangerous, offers him a bribe to look the other way while his men steal a shipment of cigarettes from a van parked outside the cafe. Ross is soon drawn into the gang's operations, but will he be able to gain enough evidence to convict them before they realise that he might not be as bent as he appears? And will he prevent them from making off with their next target? If this stuff is nickel, it must be worth a few bob. I don't know exactly how much the lorry will carry. Ten tons. Eighty thousand pounds. Will he ever regain the confidence of Sergeant Pearson, and will he be able to save his wife Joan before her blouse causes her to dissolve entirely into the sofa? No. Produced between Four Feather Falls and Supercar, Crossroads to Crime was the result of an invitation from Stuart Levy and Nat Cohen of Anglo Amalgamated to shoot a low-budget B-movie. Yeah? <laughs> That's good. As well as producing, Anderson also chose to direct the picture, hoping that its success might lead to bigger and better things. <laughs> but soon, everyone involved began to realise that it would be a race against time just to get the picture finished at all. You're making me cry. Crossroads to Crime was produced on a budget of £16,250 over just a few weeks in May and June 1960, and with very little money to waste was largely shot very close to the AP Film Studio in Slough. Thus we're treated to such exotic locations as the cafe over the road from the studio, the roads around the studio, and the studio itself, which actually is kind of interesting to see, even if it is mostly shot in total darkness. For Pete's sake, look out, Diamond! The cast do their best with what little they have, although some are clearly putting in more effort than others. Hmm. But there's more to it than that. Anthony Oliver stars as PC Don Ross, whose perfect hair and vacant stare bring little of interest to the proceedings, although his mutant ability to jump onto the side of a moving car and then cling to it like a bargain basement Spider-Man is certainly impressive. Ferdy Main also doesn't make for a particularly fearsome foe as the head gangster Miles, yes. who spends most of the film sat behind a desk before swanning off before the film's conclusion. At the other end of the performance spectrum, David Graham as henchman Johnny and Miriam Carlin as cafe owner Connie are giving far stronger performances than the film deserves. With stalwart character actors Harry Taub and Victor Madden also making the most of their limited roles. Oh yeah, I'm Sterling Moss. Perhaps the most interesting performance, in every sense of the word, is George Marcel as Diamond. Good evening, friends. Alternating between a genuinely dangerous presence and just hamming it up like crazy, <laughs> Marcel seems to be acting in a different movie to everyone else around him, and is easily one of the few bright spots of the film. Play that from Four Feather Falls. Yeah, okay. Speaking of highlights, the film boasts a musical score from Barry Gray that certainly isn't one of his finest, but may actually be the best part of the entire production. Sections of this score would later be heard again in episodes of Supercar, Fireball XL5, and most notably the Captain Scarlet episode Manhunt, where the main theme is heard playing on the radio as Captain Black murders the garage mechanic. Hold it! Upon completion of the film, Anderson took it to show Cohen and Levy. Who does he think he's fooling? After the screening concluded, there was an uncomfortable silence before Cohen turned to Anderson and told him that he'd definitely seen worse. 
The film was released to general apathy and disinterest, and Anderson would have to wait another six years before getting to produce another feature film. Now what are we going to do? Crossroads found a brief afterlife of sorts when it was broadcast on television as part of the Edgar Wallace mysteries, originally a series of B-movie adaptations of some of the famous mystery writers' novels and short stories. I know his kind. Although not considered one of the 47 films that comprised the main Edgar Wallace Mysteries canon, the film was one of several that was later drafted into the pack, and one of the few of those to receive a new Edgar Wallace opening title sequence. Just how long has this sort of thing been going on, eh? Crossroads to Crime is now available on DVD as part of Network's Edgar Wallace Presents range. Who should we congratulate? and has also recently been repeated on British television on Talking Pictures TV to delight and enthrall a whole new generation of viewers. Or not, as the case may be. You can't be too sure these days, till you know who you're dealing with. The film has been rather heavily criticised over the years, especially by the people who made it in the first place, who often describe it with four-letter words. Cheer up, man, never happened. But if any four-letter word ever truly summed up Crossroads to Crime, it would be... Okay? No, it's not okay. When viewed within the wider context of British B-movies of the time, Crossroads to Crime really does very little to disgrace or distinguish itself in any way at all. And it will never be the very worst Gerry Anderson production of all time, as long as It Could Be Practically Anywhere on the Island still exists. I'll have no alternative to report the old matter and issue a warrant for his arrest. Considering that this was the first taste of live action and location filming for a company whose biggest action scene to date had been this, <laughs> then Crossroads to Crime can at least be regarded as a minor triumph against the odds. We're just getting this business started. If nothing else, they made the film they were asked to make, and it feels like a film. Kind of. That's something. Surely? Not luck, my friend. Good management. Crossroads to Crime certainly doesn't deserve the title of worst movie of all time that some Anderson fans have chosen to bestow on it. Although when it comes to bottom-of-the-barrel Jerry Anderson fare, then this film is what you find stuck to the underside of the empty barrel when you finally take it to the dump. Okay, Ross. This is your lot. The fact that it was Jerry Anderson's first film is probably the only thing of genuine note about Crossroads to Crime, but ironically, that also works against it when viewed today, as it's definitely very unlike the work he would later be best known for. Thunderbirds are go. Red alert. Launch interceptors. This is an emergency. Anything can happen in the next half hour. Still, if you're a fan of people staring at other people from a distance, people unloading lorries, people taking an eternity to light their cigarettes, or just long, awkward silences in general, then this is the movie for you. Are you sure? Look, I'm telling you, it's alright! And if not, then you're probably going to be left feeling like you just watched a slightly shabby episode of The Saint that Roger Moore forgot to show up for. Mm -hmm. Crossroads to Crime may not be overburdened with fans, but there are certainly worse ways to kill an hour if you absolutely have to. Just as long as you're not expecting too much in the way of excitement. Or, or drama. Or intrigue. Or surprise. Or plot. Suspense. Mystery. Interest. Um... I, I'm, I'm sorry, what were we talking about again?